What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Nick here. And what we got going on today is a little RC stuff. Um We have a I have a red cat Everest 10, which I'm currently working on. And I'm looking to do I'm doing some creative thinking upgrades and stuff to it. To get it to hopefully perform a little bit better. Well, a lot of bit better. But uh, without further ado, uh, I'm going to show you what I got going on, what I've done so far, and where I'm going to be at with what I'm going to be doing to the rest of it. This is a Red Cat Everest 10. And first things first, what I'm doing is I'm... Moving the springs from their factory location here, they mount to this first screw here. The first hole in the frame there. And I'm doing Traxxas trimmed Traxxas TRX4 Bronco or K5 Blazer trim Traxxas. Might even be Red Cat wheel wheels, I don't know. But Traxxas or they start off like this. And I trim them off with the saw level with uh, all this here. So I trim all this off and then just keep this back like I did here. And I'll show you on this side. This side so far has been done. And... I'm using some machine screws and lock nuts to mount them there to these two holes here in the frame on this side. And I'm going to be doing it on all four corners. So I got some machine screws to hold the wheel well there. And then from there, I drill the hole there to mount the new location of the shock. And it's really st stiff and sturdy and nice. And it's also changing my shock angle a little bit, as you can see from where it originally mounts to there. It's so it should help with a little less torque uh, chassis twist from uh, upon throttle and um, torque twist they call it or body roll. But um, that should help a with that limiting that if not getting rid of it. And number two, allow for, still allow good flex, but keeping a little more rigidity. And by adding these posts, what I can do is, when I put my body back on, the top of these wheel wells, when I have the back mounted as well, will give a surface for the body to rest onto making more strength and rigidity for the body so that it doesn't flop around on these just being mounted to the tra the stock red cat body posts now when it comes to the body post for the body itself i have two options i could either a let the body my body i'm using rest on to the um mounts and then drill the new holes in the side of the body to go through here and then put the clips in and you still keep using the factory red cap mount mounting system or i could trim these in half and then drill two more holes in the wheel well from the back or whatever and end up screwing these to that uh, existing wheel well and that'll give me another surface to uh, mount these style body mounts so I could have it go through the body and use the clips like the traditional style body mounts just like you would find on the TRX4 or the Stampede from the factory. This is another TRX4 
this is the originally the TRX4 Bronco chassis, which the, has a two-speed transmission and the locking and unlocking disc. This one currently has a lot of nice upgraded uh, metal portal stuff and some steering linkages, I guess. But um, this is another project for another time. I uh, got to look into the electronics of this one and see what's going on with it. Maybe a wire is pinched or something, or maybe the ESC is bad. But um, And I still want to get some um, other wheels for that, which I've been looking into another set of these Red Cat Everest plastic beadlocks because these being 2.2 wheels that have... 2.2 tire stock which are these here if i get another set of these everest wheels and tires these would look nice underneath there too it'll give that van a nice meaty look mud truck off-road or even if i could find a set of the um what i'd really like would be the low c lmc or at low c LMT monster truck tires for that or the axial version of that one or even Proline or Proline has I believe they're called the Renegade no the Destroyers and Jade Concept has the Renegade monster truck tires I my goal is like a a set of tires for when I want to do some mud mudding and monster truck bashing Although I'm not going to do too heavy of a bashing, even though this has a lot of metal upgraded parts. Um, it still is brushed, has a 21 turn at reverse act, uh, Traxxas motor in it, factory motor. I don't know the gearing and the transmission yet, but uh, that again, like I said, that's another project for another time. As well as this one here, which I'm going to be, I need to get more taller of these style body mounts for this to to drill the holes in here and mount this body back on that but that's another project and i want to get this either to stampede because this is a four by four stampede i'd like to get a set of the two-wheel drive stampede front wheels and tires like a set of two two different sets of those because i hear the two front ones have a different um, backspacing or something, I don't know, because those only came on the two-wheel drives. Those specific monster truck style wheels. I hear the, tre the tread compound is not the best, but it'll be a nice scale look, and it'll still be a cool, fun basher. But, um, and then there's some my other toys. This is another one I recently acquired. It's ready to run, doesn't need anything. It's the, uh, but I do have to glue the tires to these wheels. So right now it's just sitting there. This is the Kyosho Phaser Mark II chassis with the factory Chevelle uh, body. It's all wheel drive. This particular one has a brushless setup in it. I'll get into that one on another time, as well as any of the other ones you guys might have questions or, in, or look, want information on Red Cat 64. Pala, which there'll be more i like to do this as well down the road but getting back to this project here i'm going to try and find, figure out here how to set my camera up so you guys can see what i'm doing here i'm going to grab my saw and i'm going to start here with trimming this and once this is trimmed i can put the two screws there and there through the chassis of the uh of the red cat and then i could mount my um front spring to the wheel well and then from there the front will be done and i can move on to the back so without further ado let me get you set up here and we'll uh i'll get going on this sorry for my camera quality i don't have any uh stands or anything at the moment so what I got is what I got, and that's what I got to work with. But, there we go. I'm going to start trimming this.
I do need a nice Dremel tool or something. This would go a lot quicker. I do realize that, but in time I will get one. Done. Of course, I got two more to go, but that's pretty much it there. That's what it was. And this is what it's going to be. Now, some ask, why didn't I just leave them, to get, leave them all together and put them on? And I could probably have done that too. But being that this is a 2.2 tire, I wanted the ground clearance. I didn't want the tire to have to hit that fender, front part of the fender when I flex. So, that's where that splitting it comes into play. So... Now that I've got that situated, I'm going to go ahead and start inserting the screws here through the fender first. All the way in the last hole and through the frame. And then I'll add a locking nut. After I set this uh, other front one up, I will... Uh, I'll end up showing you guys some of the part numbers and stuff of the hardware that I got. These wheel wells you could probably get anywhere. If you look up Traxxas TRX4 wheel wells or I believe even the Red Cat Gen 8 wheel wells you could use as well. Also help if I stop dropping the bolts. You know, use my Traxxas tool. Tighten that up. I'm going to leave it snug for the most part because I still got to put the other screw in. And I'll get another one of these. Get that into the front hole. I haven't even put the other nut on and that's still already sturdy. So now that I got the other bolt in at least, I'm going to tighten this last this back one up first. Because of how they sit, the nuts on the back side of the frame are very close to each other. So you won't be able to get the tool, Traxxas tool on in the first place after you get the other nut on. You'll have to use a needle nose vice grips for that. Now I can slide. You will be able to get both of the nuts on these on these uh, these screws. You just won't be able to get the tool on to tighten them on. If you have once you have one of the other nuts on, that is. So now that I got the other one started too, I'm gonna keep twist holding the nut by hand and the twist until I can't turn it no more and hold it. And that's where the needle nose vice grips comes in. I'm 
All right. And now we'll take the screw in the shock. I'll not back off of that and thread that back into this hole, pre-drilled hole that I drilled to the on the front of the uh, body here. Then we'll tighten this. Same thing, tracks this tool, and this these shocks on the Red Cat, or at least mine that I have here, have the uh, Phillips screw on the other end of the shock. Perfect. Now, I'll grab the over here clip, and I'll show you what I, what I did, because I know you probably couldn't see, but I got the two of the machine screws and there's the factory red cat one come on camera there you go and on the back that's what you got over there there's the two machine screws with the nut again and the nut for the uh the shock and now the fronts are done now we'll do the same with the back too i got the two back ones here two wheel wells we'll trim these and then uh throw these on but first here's the uh three by a three millimeter lot nylon knocking locking nuts and there's a package with another package with part number 2745 um they're 12 count they come much from traxxas i believe they're like three bucks 250 I don't know. Um, here's the screws that I'm using for the wheel well part. These are three by eight millimeter hex head hex cap screws, part number fifteen fifty two, and that is these guys here. They come with these washers and stuff too. I, you could use the washers, but I wasn't going to fit both washers there, so I didn't, and that is plenty strong for what it is already, so I'm not worried about it. Plus, with the locking nuts, I, they're going to be fine. But uh, that's those part numbers here. These here are part number 2581. They're 3 by 25 millimeter bolts. They're the same thing as these. But they're roughly inch and a half or inch and a quarter long versus these are like a half inch or whatever. These I was thinking about using to go through this body panel and then into the wheel through the wheel wheel well as well so I could have my um, body post if I decide to go with this body post. But that's another video. That's going to be probably in part two of this build. I already did the, uh, I should say part three, because I part two, one of the build already was mounting these Duratrax Deep Woods 2.2s onto the Ever stock Everest 10 wheels. That was pretty easy. There's just a bunch of screws here. And then there's a bunch of screws on the back side of the rim, too. You got to obviously take the rim off. You could undo the ring here, undo the ring on the back, and then you could pull the tire off and then put the other one in and put the B-Lots back on. But that was the first thing I did about two hours ago. So that was part one, which I didn't get. Unfortunately, I forgot and didn't think to film, but... It's okay, you'll get some performance videos of this thing and how it does. This is part two, which is the main big thing I wanted to make sure I got something done. Because just in case anybody else here with this 
or that does own one of these Red Cat Everest 10s, they're probably looking for other different ways to change things up, make things perform a little better, or even modify it in some ways. And I, I didn't think I seen too many videos for the most part on the mar on YouTube of um what people were doing. So I wanted to share what I was doing at least so you guys could see what I'm doing and how go how to go about doing it and what I did if you wanted to do that as well. And another cool thing here, if you still want to lower your center of gravity, because this thing's got plenty of ground clearance now. Pretty much stock ground clearance, but maybe a little bit more, I don't know. But say this setup's too stiff for you, or you want to even lower the center of gravity more. With the shocks set up this way now, it's easy to unbolt them there, unbolt them down there, and put a smaller shock, a smaller millimeter shock if you wanted to, or even an adjustable one, like something like these on the TRX4. Something with the collar that you could adjust to a give it higher or lower ride height and b adjust the stiffness and of the suspension and how much flex you're going to get out of it will determine that you just got to measure your millimeter for the shocks which some down the road is something i'm probably going to end up doing with this is eventually changing these sock shocks but for now, I'm gonna. I'm more than excited to see how it's gonna perform with those. I think it'll do perfectly fine. But um, uh, let's. That's that for now. Let's get back into this. I'm gonna put you down, and I'm gonna knock out the back, and then we'll get back into the video and do the recap with everything else. Real quickly here, before I finish this up. I wanted to show you guys something else. Another advantage I think that anybody who has one of these Everests might have of doing this setup that I'm doing is that the fact, besides the the airway area of how the shocks are mounted, I think even being that this original setup is mounted inboard of the frame, the new setup being mounted on the outboard of the frame, on the outside, I think that's going to help a lot too. Because they're not sitting like this and tilted back. They're sitting upward, not straight, but almost straight and a little more straight up and down. So I think that might help too. But we'll see when it when I go to perform this thing on the trails and whatnot, but uh, let's finish this up and I'll get right back to you guys. Well, we're back and we are done for now. Now, because I figured I'd set it up here all flexed out. This is as much as you're going to get out of it, which still is plenty of flex. You lose a little bit of flex with this setup, but again, that's only a matter of changing out your springs. And putting different spring rates, you can get more. But this being a little, a little bit stiff, I definitely I could feel it being stiffer than it was stock. You're definitely going to have less of the uh, body twist, torque twist, than you would have with the stock one. So, all in all, my thoughts, I'd say this is definitely a success. And it's definitely a really good, cheap upgrade anybody can do if to their Everest 10 if they wanted to get a little more strength and rigidity as well as still good flex. Like so you can see here, that's a 8-ounce um, duplicolor can. And it's flexing out nice. It is off the ground a little bit there. But if you twist this thing, it can, it can get it to stay, actually, you know, but whatever. But you're still getting plenty of flex out of this for what anybody would want to do. And again, these are 2.2 tires. 
that are on it in wheels. Full the factory 2.2 wheels, but 2.2 Duratrac Deep Woods CRs. I love these tires. I have these tires here on this in 2.2 size, which I can't wait to try out. And I also have them here on the TRX4 Sport. But anyway, this is what the video was mainly about today. And like I said, very easy setup to do. All you really need to do this modification to your Red Cat Everest is some kind of saw of some sort or Dremel tool so you could trim the wheel well shorter because your tire, as you can see with flex, will be coming up into it. And now with it fully flexed out, I got plenty of clearance. But you still get plenty of stiffness. You get good flex. Good sturdy rig. Good socks I moved out when you do this. Or you could, it's up to you on which, what you want to do, how, how you want to set it up. I move the shocks outboard of the frame rather than inboard of the frame on the factory location. Because I could easily undo them and put them on the other side. I figured I'd try it like this, see if there's a difference. Who knows? But, Troxxas TRX4 wheel wells or Red Cat Gen 8 wheel wells, I think might work as well. Um, as long as you have a bunch of those holes there for options as to where you could put your mounting holes. And if not, you could find a set of these wheel wells, trim them still in drill holes to wherever you need them mounted. Which isn't a big deal either. So either way, win-win for you guys. So you need Traxxas or Red Cat wheel wells. You're going to need... Two packages of these 1552 Traxxas 3mm, 3x8mm hex cap screws. They're three bucks per package at the hobby shop that I bought them at here in Connecticut at a, a Motto's toy store in Middlebury, Middletown. I'm sorry, a Motto's toy store. In Middletown, um, Middletown, Connecticut, they, these screws were $3 a package. I believe you got, I think there was like 6 and 6, so I got 12 out of the 2, so it was enough to do the wheel wells. Because I needed 10, technically, or 8, but I made sure I got extra. Because you always want to make sure you get extra screws with these. So, those for the wheel well, and... If you want, and you're going to need these, the 2745 3mm, so you're basically going to need two packages of the 1552 uh, screws and two packages of the nuts. I have plenty left over now just from the one package of the nuts. Because I bought another one for the longer screws for the the um, body posts. Which I don't know yet if I'm still going to do or not. You don't necessarily have to buy these to do the body posts here if you want. If you want to trim these back more and still utilize your factory ones. You guys can do that too. Because you can see the wheel wells do stick out a little bit past these mounts. So if you trimmed them. A little bit cut a little bit off this way you can have enough room to still use those or you can do what I might end up doing and mount the body post to the wheel wells either way anyway but well, that's pretty much it wheel wells two packages of screws two packages of nuts and this mod you can probably have done in I'd say all of a half hour at the most maybe to an hour and you'll need your Allen keys, which these packages with the screws do come with this Allen key. There's a new one Allen key per package, so you'll have these. And then you'll just need your 
Where did it go? Then you'll need this. Your Traxxas. Um, uh, lug nut key wrench thing. So you can have the different size. Or if you have sockets. For your, all the different size locking nuts. Here. I'm sorry about that. Yeah. So you. These. Three millimeter nuts. And the ones for the suspension. Shocks. Are all the same three millimeter size and they're all locking nuts so you're good there basically these three tools i was able to do this whole job and four if you add the screwdriver because my red cat had phillips head screws on the other end of the shocks but those four tools wheel wells two packages of screws two packages of nuts and you could have this thing done in about an hour. That wheel well mod. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And like, subscribe if you liked what you've seen. And for more, so I'll be uploading more content and videos. And um, yeah. Uh, that's pretty much it for now. I think actually I can't leave you guys with just like, with like that with the... Uh, with it's like that i gotta show you what the body's gonna look like so let me put you down quick and i'll give you a little touch look as to what the body is gonna look like if it hopefully fits there you guys go i didn't want to tease you that much but i am gonna have to trim the wheel wells a little bit it is a little they are still a little wide for that body it's an old charisma body, but that does that does look really cool. That looks cool, and I could see here because now uh, the body. If I trim the wheel wells a little bit, the body will go down a little bit more, and I might still be able to use these holes for the mounting back through the body. But I got to trim the wheel wells. And they're rusting in the back, so I might not be able to in the back. Maybe I will just go ahead and do the other, these post style, after all. Probably give more strength and rigidity to the body as well. But that does look really cool. Look at that thing. That's going to be one crazy crawler when it's done. But, uh, thank you. That's it. Thank you guys for watching, and... I'll post another video on uh, testing um, testing it out on the trail once I get that point. I think next is going to be body post situation. And then from there, I want to change the motor over. But that is it for this video. It's been a long video. Hope I didn't lose any of you guys. But uh, if you liked what you saw and... Want to see more cool videos or whatever? Like, subscribe, like, and subscribe. And uh, I will talk to you guys later. Peace out.